Theatrephonic presents Just the Place for a Snark. Written by Nigel Foster. An extract from Lewis Carroll's poem The Hunting of the Snark. They sought it with thimbles. They sought it with care. They They pursued pursued it with forks and hope. They threatened its life with a railway share. They They charmed charmed it with with smiles and and soap. soap. All right, boss. <laughs> Morning. You all set then, Mel? No last-minute cold feet? No, of course not. Good, just as well. Bearing in mind that what we are doing is not exactly above board. Yeah, yeah. I've worked out that for myself. The firm has total deniability should we be caught. OK, good. That's understood, then. Here's your ferry ticket. We've booked you to join the Bellman Tours party. I'm under the name Jeff Butcher, and you are Mel Baker. You're kidding me. Butcher and Baker. So where's the candlestick maker, then? You do know how unbelievable that's going to sound. All right, all right, all right. You're the boss. You just need to learn to keep your trap shut, young lady, and don't draw attention to us neither. Silent as a Trappist monk, OK? What, like Leo DiCaprio in that film? Oh, what was it? The, um, the Revy... The Revy Vanti... Oh, uh, the Revy Vanti No, thing. stupid. Nothing to do with fur trapping. These are a type of monk, see? And they take a vow of silence. Wow. Never heard of them. Yeah, these guys don't speak to each other ever. Although I did hear of a branch of this Trappist order which allowed one lucky monk, just one, mind you, from the entire monastery, who was permitted to speak a few words during their annual grand dinner for their Founders' Day, straight after saying grace. So, this monk, he goes Benedictus, Benedicat, and so forth, and then he adds, Brothers, I have to say that I really cannot bear our morning porridge. It's made way too runny. That's it. Nothing more. And then he sits down. Total silence across the whole dining room, because no one else is allowed to speak a word, see? Then what? Well, that's not the end of it. A whole 12 months go by, and a different monk gets the chance to speak. And he goes, Benedictus, Benedicat, etc. And then he adds, Brothers, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the breakfast porridge. It is fine as it is. Nothing else. And then he sits down. And total silence, of course. Them all being Trappists. Another long year goes by, and this third monk cops the chance of having a few words at the annual dinner. So he does the grace business, and then he goes, Oh, for heaven's sake, can we please stop this constant bickering about the wretched porridge? It's doing my head in. <laughs> Do my head in? Constant bickering? Get it? Uh... Oh, never mind. Ah, this must be our ferry now. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now reached the Dodgson Nature Reserve. Please make your way to the starboard exit and do take extra care with your footing as you leave the boat. On behalf of the captain and all the crew, we hope you have a really enjoyable day at the reserve and we look forward to seeing you again very soon. Good morning, everyone. I promise I won't keep you long. I just need to run through a few things. Um, You've all paid in advance for your entrance tickets, and I have them here. I'll be handing them out in a minute. 
means we can all go straight through the entrance turnstiles over there, the ones marked groups. Once through the turnstile, there is a quick but compulsory briefing from one of the park rangers on the really important do's and don'ts of the nature reserve. Please listen very carefully to what he or she has to say, and then you are free to explore this absolutely magical place. Yeah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you will have a little over three hours to explore the sanctuary, and I will give you each a map with your entrance ticket. It's going to be a hot day, so please apply your sunblock now, and you will definitely need to keep yourselves hydrated. Keep drinking from your bottle of water. Uh, finally, please stick to the marked pathways at all times. I can see a few of you have brought some serious pieces of camera equipment with you, but none of you should go off-piste for that award-winning shot of a snark, however tempting it might be. It could well be your last. There are some hidden gullies and chines in the park which are truly treacherous, and a very long drop down onto sharp rocks way below. Any questions? Yes, I've got a question, Mr Bellman. What do you reckon are our chances of luring the snout out of his lair? Most of us are here making this trip just to see him. My girlfriend and I have polished these silver serving forks so we can really catch today's sunshine. We reckon they'll want to come out and take a closer look. And they're genuine, George, and solid silver. And that's bound to increase our chances, isn't it? It's always possible. If you look online, there are all manner of theories, and to be honest, any one of them might be accurate. And I can see from the tips of some people's fingers that some of you prefer the thimble method. Is that right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 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 Whatever your preferred way of attracting the snark, the park ranger will tell you during the briefing that being very quiet is really your best bet. But, as I hope you all understood from your booking forms, there is no guarantee you will see the snark today. I'm sorry, I wish I could tell you otherwise. But do please remember, there are lots of other fascinating and rare creatures you could see today around the reserve, including the turtle dove, the jub-jub bird and the small tortoiseshell butterfly. If you keep your eyes peeled, you may even catch a glimpse of one of the family of water voles who have nested down in the riverbank. OK, everyone, the time is now uh, quarter past eleven. The ferry leaves promptly at half past two back here at this jetty. So please, do keep a close eye on the time. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, Mr Bellman, haven't we been lucky with the weather? I'm so looking forward to catching a glimpse of the snark. Where do you recommend we go for the best chances of seeing him? My husband and I have come well equipped. Aren't these sparkly thimbles wonderful? We know for a fact that snarks cannot resist coming over and taking a closer look at the brightly coloured thimble. That is right, wouldn't you agree? Well, I was just saying to the chap over there, different folks have different ideas about what will bring the snark out of hiding. As to where to go, well, I'm perhaps not the best person to ask, I'm afraid. I myself have only spotted him a couple of times in all the years I've been coming here. But believe me, the sight is well worth the wait. Your best bet is to go to the really secluded places at the far end of the park and then try and keep still for as long as you possibly can. As well as agreeing that snarks are late risers out of their dens, all the experts warn snarks are incredibly shy and pretty slow-witted as well. Good luck with it, and I look forward to seeing your photos and hearing how you got on when we're all back for the ferry home. 2.30, remember. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, a very warm welcome to the Dodgson's Nature Reserve and Sanctuary. 
You are all indeed truly welcome to the home of the world-famous snark. Please take a couple of minutes to read this board, which sets out our few simple rules. We ask you to observe as you enjoy your day in this truly entrancing, unspoiled place. We ask that you take nothing but photographs, leave nothing but footprints, and keep nothing except your voices down low. That way, you increase the chances of getting a glimpse of our star attraction, that shy and mysterious creature, the snark. And now this is really important. We have built the boundary rails alongside each path deliberately low so as to preserve the natural, unspoilt look and sight lines of the reserve. You must stick to the pathways do not attempt to step over the rails, no matter how tempting that may be. There are all sorts of hidden holes and pits, which are incredibly dangerous. Thank you. Finally, we have a local saying around these parts. If you say something three times, there is never any doubt that it is true. So, I say it a third time. On behalf of all of us who count ourselves so lucky to be working here in this amazing place, each and every one of you is truly welcome. Now, please, if you could make your way out of this door here, it will lead you through our gift shop and cafe and then out into the reserve. I hope you have a truly memorable day. And good morning to you, sir. It's Mr. Um, Butcher, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's me. I've been dying to ask, what's in that long box? It doesn't look like the camera cases our customers normally bring with them on this trip. Oh, this, uh, yes. Well, it's, uh, it's a special camera, custom made for capturing the, uh, the snitch. You see, the legs on this one aren't telescopic, so they don't collapse any further down. Oh, really? That is most unusual, I must say. Well, aren't you going to take it out and get it ready to start photographing the amazing wildlife just the other side of that door? No, no, not in here. I only take it out when I'm ready to start working, not before. Oh, well. Suit yourself. <laughs> I'll wish you and your friend a pleasant day and see you both back at the jetty at 2.30. And please, at the risk of repeating myself, please stick to the pathways. There genuinely are some hidden dangers in the undergrowth. Are we clear? Good. Have a good day. Nosy idiot. I've only just met him and I ate him already. Him and his stupid handbell. Here, yeah, Mel, look at the sign over there, up on that tree. Danger! Boojum! Be on your guard. What on earth do you think that means? Search me, Jeff. It's a very official-looking sign, but that park ranger didn't mention anything about any boojum just now, did he? What, that Egypt? <laughs> to be honest, I didn't listen to a word he said. But elf and safety means they have a legal duty to tell us about any dangers. He said nothing. That means there's nothing we need to worry about, and we sue the arse off the company if anything should happen to us. Come to think of it, I may just do that anyhow. You know, I may just have a little stumble, graze my forehead on a tree trunk, and they settle out of court because they don't want the bad publicity. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, it's worked for me in the past. Nice little owner. Tell me, why were you happy to volunteer for this gig? This is the future we're talking about. Swooshing millennials like me really fast about the country so we can see our mates in far distant towns in the blink of an eye. Come on, Jeff. You must have read sci-fi comic strips when you were young that painted a future where speed of travel was pretty much instantaneous. You know... Warp speed, Mr. Sulu. <laughs> I am convinced that what the firm is doing now is just the first step on a series of innovations that will end up with us finally able to travel at the speed of light. 
And that's going to be the key to getting mankind out of our solar system and off to visit distant galaxies. That's the future I want. And I am not going to let rich second homers with their lardy da ways and their effing 4 by 4s wind up the local country bumpkins to try and stop it. You know what we call them back home? VIPs. VIPs? How come? Village idiots and peasants. <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Mel. I like it. <laughs> what about you? Why are you getting involved with all this when the firm is so unpopular? Do you know? I hate the countryside, me. I couldn't give a rat's ass about any wildlife. All this guff about endangered species, it's all made up, you know. I read it on one of those online bulletin boards. These wildlife charities and organisations and whatnot are nothing more than a front for the worldwide network of filthy rich bankers to diddle gullible people like you and me out of our hard-earned money. Mm. These animals they keep banging on about are no more endangered than you or me. It's all one big lie. A con. Come on, better get going. Lots of work to do. Right. Now, no one's around, and particularly not that nosy bellman guy. Thank goodness he carries that stupid bell with him. At least we'll hear him coming down the track. I think this looks like a good starting place, don't you? If I set up the theodolite over there, just the other side of that rail, you can take the range pole about 50 metres down the path and we can start finalising these plans. Sure thing, Jeff. Is that about right? Yeah, that's good, Mel. Let me just adjust the focus. You'll never guess what, Jeff. Someone's gone and nailed another one of those signs up. Mm, what sign? Says extreme danger, Boojum. Nothing else. <laughs> That's just weird, isn't it? <gasps> hey, watch out. There's some people coming down the path behind you. Don't worry, Mel. The real trick is not to panic. Just look bored. Act like we're both meant to be here and you would far rather be somewhere else. <laughs> That's not too difficult to imagine. I'm really looking forward to getting a glimpse of a turtle dove in the meadow down there. It says here, best place for them is where the wood. See what I meant, Mel? They didn't take the blindest bit of notice of us, did they? We are nothing but tradesmen to them, invisible shadows in the background to their petty little middle-class world. But what if they go and tell the park ranger? They won't. And besides, if it ever occurs to them to do so, we'll be finished here in an hour or so, with the theodolite neatly packed back into the box, looking for all the world like some expensive piece of camera equipment once more. And we are just two of them smug day trippers. Bon. Bon. Are you enjoying Theatrephonics plays? Do you want more content? Well, on the Theatrephonic Patreon, we have ad-free episodes, blooper reels, and Q&A sessions, as well as the opportunity to watch the live recordings and name a character in a play. Visit patreon.com forward slash Theatrephonic for more information. That's patreon.com forward slash Theatrephonic to get more of what you love. Bon. Bon. There we go, Mel. Nearly finished now. Last couple of measurements to take. Hey, you too. Oh, gold. What the blazes do you two think you are doing? For the love of God, this is the third time of warning you two that you must not go behind that rail. It's incredibly dangerous. Hang on a minute, matey. I know what that is. It's a theodolite. Just what the hell do you think you are doing with that here? You are my responsibility all the time you are here in the sanctuary. May I remind you that we are all guests here. So tell me, 
Just what in heaven's name is going on? OK, OK. Look, I can see you're upset. Too and... true I'm upset. I'm bloody furious with a pair of you. Tell me what is going on. All right, all right, I'll level with you, Squire. Jeff, remember our instructions. Look, Squire, we weren't wholly honest with you when we booked ourselves on your trip here. We are not twitchers. We both work for the HVR, the High Velocity Railway Company. The line is scheduled to run straight down this way from over there in the north. We have been told to carry out a feasibility study for it to pass plumb through the centre of this here sanctuary. And then it carries on over there to the southeast, all the way down to the capital. Simple as that. Our lords and masters have instructed us to validate these plans, and that is exactly what we are going to do. And there is nothing that you can do to stop us. I should knock all kinds of... Naughty, naughty. Lay a single finger on me, and that would be assault. Mel, get out your phone and video this violent man. All right. All right. But I just cannot fathom out why all the deception. Surely you could simply have made an official appointment with the owner and then... Ah, they don't know anything about this, do they? Mm, nope, not yet. Then why are you doing this all ass about face? Surely you just need to get prior permission and then you can do all this strictly above board. I well, that would be logical, I agree. But at the moment, the company does not exactly enjoy the best PR and it is really keen to avoid public confrontation when it hasn't yet finished weighing up two alternative routes. This one through the middle of the sanctuary and another one that runs further inland over there. Missing out this reserve entirely. To be quite frank, this one here is the one that my bosses want, as it is the straighter, therefore easier, and cheaper to build. But until Mel there and I have finished surveying today, we are not going to be in a position to make our recommendations about which route. Well, that's simple. Just tell your bosses that this route is a non-starter. The reserve is designated a site of special scientific interest, as well as being a conservation area. There'll be an outcry. Not just amongst all the locals, but right across the country. But you know all that, don't you? So, what's the payoff? What is your loathsome company going to offer the sanctuary's owner to get them to cave in? Well, nothing underhand, I do assure you, mate. Our employer has given us the authority to offer them a tidy shareholding in HVR PLC in return for letting us build the tracks through here. That's right. I've got all the forms here to make the share transfer today, assuming that once we have finished our work, it's obvious this is to be the root of the line. Do you have any concept what damage this railway line will do? Not just to this wonderful sanctuary, I mean, but to the wildlife and, of course, to the landscape all around here. Trust me, if you do recommend that this is to be the route, I guarantee that within 24 months this entire area of gorgeous countryside will resemble nothing short of the total and utter destruction which completely flattened the Flanders countryside by the time World War I came to an end. You must have seen the pictures in the history books. Only a few stumps of trees left, but once there had been magnificent woods, all in a drear landscape of nothing but churned up mud. Yeah, you really shouldn't exaggerate, you know. This is only a twin-track railway line, not some huge, multi-lane American freeway. OK. Why don't you just take a closer look at those plans you've got there, eh? Let's see how wide a swathe of land your bosses are really planning on clearing. Well, I can show you now. Look here. It's only 19 metres from the outside rail of the up line across to the outside rail of the down line. Pretty much the same size as half a three-lane motorway. Nothing to get all het up about. Including the fences? Well, no. OK. Let's take the boundary fences into the calculations. 
That now takes the ground needing to be cleared up to something like 24 metres across. More where there is to be a cutting or embankment, because obviously their slopes will need to be gradually built up to guard against landslips. And do you imagine that they will leave untouched any of the trees that run along the outside of those fences and risk each autumn's leaf fall reducing the speed their precious trains can run at? No, obviously not. So what you've now got is a 24 metre wide gash going all the way down to the capital, flanked by a 25 metre no vegetation band being added on both sides of the tracks, mark you. By my quick mental maths, I reckon that all adds up to a colossal 74 metres of ugly and utterly heartbreaking destruction which your work today, without doubt, will bring down on this sanctuary. 74 metres, for heaven's sake. We're talking here about a swathe of destruction that's wider than the pitch at Wembley Stadium. Every metre of this horrible line all the way right down to the capital. Here, Jeff, tell him that's rubbish. Go on. Um... I'm sorry, young lady, but he can't. Can you, Jeff? Because what I have just outlined is nothing more than the facts, as published by your own employers. But you cannot argue with the fact that this enterprise will be the most sustainable high-speed railway anywhere in the world. It's a known fact that rail travel is much, much better for the environment than travelling by car. Seven times more efficient. And I'll have you know, our CEO has publicly pledged to plant seven million new trees along the route and... Where? Where what? Where are the seven million new trees going to be planted, exactly? Well, I don't know the exact location, of course, but they will be planted along the route and... No, they won't. They can't, because of the 25 metre no vegetation band on either side of the tracks, remember? The same thing we were only just talking about. I'll tell you what your lords and masters will do. They will find a tame local farmer who has parcels of poor quality land. No good for anything but the old EU set-aside fund from 20 years back. And then HVR will cram in as many saplings as they possibly can, irrespective either of the suitability of the location for growing trees, or whether in fact most, or even all, of them die within the first 12 months. Boring. One thing is absolutely sure, though, even if by some miracle these saplings actually survive into maturity at all, you will not be able to look out of the window of the wretched HVR trains and enjoy the view of these new woods. They are going to be well out of sight, believe me. But see here, Mr Bell Ringer. Everyone's going to get down to the capital so much quicker and do their shopping, aren't they? Tell him, Jeff. That's going to be the real plus for people from here, ain't it? Uh... Yes, Jeff. Do tell me all about how this wonderful, shiny new railway is going to make my life easier and that of all the good folk who also live round here. How exactly are we going to benefit from the upcoming destruction your employers will shortly unleash? Well... You can't, can you? The truth is, miss, the plans for this railway don't include any local stations at all. Nicht. Nanti. Nada. For people around here to use the new line, they will have to drive all the way northwards for an hour. And that's not exactly great for reducing anyone's carbon footprint, is it? Because the next stop to the south is the terminus in the capital itself. You can see I'm really wound up about it all now. You are right, I can't stop you. But I am going to call the ranger's office now and they do have the authority to stop you. And I also think you both need to take a long, hard look at yourselves and decide whether this job of yours is actually going to be worth the dreadful impact it will have on the countryside and, in particular, 
on this wonderful nature reserve. Hello. Ah. Hello, rangers. You You're a horrible, know. narrow minded, petty little man. Arsehole! Dickhead! Right, Mel. We need to get a move on. We've probably only got ten minutes max now left to complete this job. Final measurement, according to this plan, will be down there, just alongside that big tree towards the edge of the cliff. Oh, look, they've nailed up another one of those signs. <laughs> Let's see, this one says, Risk of Death, Bojum. Nope, still no idea. But I don't think it's very customer friendly to go and paint a hideous skull on the sign, do you? Inbred yokels. You know how they celebrate round here? Proper job, Petey. Give them a high six. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is this the best place for the range pole, Jeff? A bit more to the edge, please, Mel. No, it needs to go a bit further out. Still, here. Let me hold it as well, and I can just show you... Make sure you're holding onto something firm. Here, take my hand, and you grab onto that branch over there with your free hand. Ooh. Watch out. Help! Ah! My friends, what have you done? I know. I just went boo and they both jumped. I swear I never bumped into them at all. There will be repercussions, you know. There always are. Yeah, I suppose so. But they said some really horrid things about the good folk who live round here. And about you too. I could hear them as I hid in the bushes. And they thought they could buy me off with shares in their horrible little railway. Did you know that? No, I didn't know. But you wouldn't have sold up, would you? This park has been owned by your snark family for generations. Generations on generations on generations. And they wanted to see it destroyed. Forever. I couldn't let that happen. I just couldn't. I know, I know. <laughs> I goes boo, and they jumped. You should have seen the look on their faces. <laughs> I goes boo, and they just jumped clean off the ledge. They weren't very nice people, were they? No, that's true. I think you got the measure of those two, all right. Shall we go and put the kettle on? Yeah, that would be good. Perhaps we could also have some freshly picked green beans, lightly boiled. Ooh, maybe dripping with melted butter on them. Mmm. Sounds like a great idea. Let's head back to your den. It's been quite a day, hasn't it? And we need to discuss them reaper things, too. Repercussions. Mm. Uh, we'll see if we can sort everything out. Come on. You've been listening to Just the Place for a Snark, written by Nigel Foster, directed by Emmeline Brayfield, with Caitlin Howard as Mel, Jonathan Legg as Jeff and the Snark, Helen Fullerton as the park ranger, ferry announcer, and day trippers one and two, and Jane Lloyd as Mr. Bellman, produced by Cat on a Piano Productions. For a full list of the music included in the play, please see our show notes. 
the theatophonic theme tune was composed by Jackson Pentland, performed by Jackson Pentland, Molly Fife Taylor, and Emmeline Brayfield. For more information about the Theatophonic podcast, go to catonapiano.uk forward slash theatophonic. Tweet or Instagram us at theatophonic or visit our Facebook page. If you enjoy Theatophonic and would like to get more content, please consider becoming a patron by going to patreon.com forward slash theatophonic. Please don't forget to rate and review. Thank you for listening. Ba-da.